Hello viewers, four DIYers here, back with a tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a generic tutorial video on how to troubleshoot your CD changer on your vehicle. Now this particular car I am working with here today is a 1997 BMW 540i. A lot of the vehicle manufacturers out there today, if you do have a CD changer equipped either in the trunk, maybe it's under a seat, inside the glove box, it all depends, they will use a generic type manufacturer for these. Now for this vehicle here, I believe this one is a Alpine unit. Alpine does make a lot of units for a lot of different vehicles. Now there is other manufacturers there as now, well. First, one of the more common problems which you can occur is with the CD changer cartridge here. Now what this cartridge is is basically just houses all the discs here. Now this one here I have is a six disc CD changer so obviously there'll be six discs in that cartridge. You have six slots or six little trays that do pop out uh, in order to hold those discs into place. Now what can happen over time is either maybe just a little bit of dirt, debris, they might get a little oily inside, it does depend. Now there just isn't supposed to be a lubricant in these cartridges. They're supposed to be perfectly dry and they're just basically a sliding fit. It's all a plastic assembly. Other times what can happen here is the plastic assembly will also have little bits that do break off, either the one that pulls the disc out or maybe on the side slots they might break and then eventually bind up which doesn't allow you to work properly. Now these cartridges can be uh, purchased again new, so you can get a replacement for them, or a lot of times, as I mentioned before, they do make a generic unit for all these. So what can happen here is you can take a cartridge from the same model CD changers, and all these CD changers are models, depending on what years yours is. And you can take one that's interchangeable from one vehicle to another. Now normally when you do press this little button here, it'll release out of the slot here. Obviously I'm having a little difficulty with this one here. I am having actually a couple issues with my own CD changer here. But if you're able to get this cartridge out here, and if you do find that there isn't an issue with that moving in and out, what you can go ahead and do is a lot of times is just taking one of these little uh, can of um, basically dust away or blast away things you can purchase for your uh, normally computer electronics, what you can go ahead and do is just take this, stick the little nozzle inside and go ahead and blow the inside of it out. And a lot of times what will happen there is a little dust will get lodged in somewhere and it'll cause some issues uh, with the way it operates. And once you go ahead and do that and uh, give it a try, you might have to do it a couple times. Don't use an air compressor because that is too high pressure and you can risk damaging the internals in this. This is just a medium pressure. Go ahead and obviously do pay attention to when you are using the can of the directions on the side because if you do overuse the can, it can get cold or if you do bend it a certain way, uh, for instance if you do hold it upside down, you can spray direct nitrogen onto there and if you do have hot circuits in there, what can happen is you can put a cold spot in there and might risk damaging something. Now, as I'm having issues here, unfortunately, what I'll have to do is I'll actually have to remove the whole CD changer in order to diagnose the problem and possibly split down the whole case in order to get that cartridge out or even changing the orientation. Sometimes when you leave it plugged in, say it does face upwards, it faces the opposite way. We're looking at the bottom side here. So when you are facing the upwards way with the cartridge, sometimes I find if you do uh, unbolt it from the vehicle, then you do put it on its side, so the cartridge would be out on this orientation here, basically on this face here. Sometimes the cartridge will come out. Obviously there's probably some stickier, dirty internals, uh, which we do have to address, and I'll show you in a moment. Now if you do find you do have to remove this, be sure to disconnect the battery on your vehicle when working with electronics, just to ensure that uh, nothing gets damaged in the process. Now, as you can see with this one here as well, we do have a fuse in the bottom side here. Some may have fuses built into them, other ones may not. Now it will depend with your vehicle's manufacturer. Now with this one here, I have checked the fuse and the fuse is working correctly. Now as for other fuse locations on your vehicle, you will have to consult with your owner manual. As for removal process, these are fairly straightforward. I have the three wires on the bottom side that I had to disconnect and then I have the five bolts to remove. Now I am working with a BMW E39. So if you are looking for a specific tutorial on that, I will include that in the description below. Now first we want to start by doing here is removing that outer bracket that does go around the outside which holds it into place. Now depending on your CD changer, the brackets may vary a little. I did have two screws on each side. Now you could either use a wrench or socket or even a Phillips screw on there in order to remove that bracket that goes go around the outside. Once we have that removed, we can then go ahead and remove this casing to gain access to the internals here. This will vary between makes and models, but it will be a similar procedure. Now, for this particular unit, I am using a small Phillips screwdriver. So first, we'll start by doing is removing this rear cap. Now, ensure that you don't lose these screws. Now, I am working on the inside here. So if you are working indoors, and you don't want to scratch your floor because some of this metal can be sharp on these CD changers. It's good to put a piece of paper down. Now once you remove that, you want to be careful with these wires here to ensure they do not break. Now when working with electronics as well, it's always good to have a ground strap on yourself. 
just in case any static electricity does build up and you don't want to risk shocking the electronics which could damage any electronics here. Just want to flip it around to the opposite side here. It's a little awkward here. I'm trying to get everything in focus so everyone can see what I'm doing. And we'll start by removing these screws on the top side here. Now just to ensure that you don't mix up these screws either because sometimes they are different depending on the casing. And you don't want to have a deeper one that's a little more longer that goes into the internals and then it ends up hitting the electronic components as well. Now once you have removed those screws, you can then go ahead and start popping apart this case here. Now first I'm just using a small flat screwdriver here. You can go ahead on the back side here and you can see this does start popping it all the way open. Now these are sometimes a little tricky to deal with. They're not the nicest things to remove and the same goes for reassembly too. They can be a little tricky at times. You can see we have a little tang that's depressed down there that goes underneath this outer case and there's a little tab on there as well so that somewhat snaps into that. You can see slowly popping apart. Now again when removing the case as well you want to be sure you don't stick the screwdriver all the way in the inside because again you do risk the chance of damaging any electrical components that are in there. Now what I've done first, I've just removed the face here just because it's easier to work with and I can get behind it in a mechanism as well. They have two snap clips, one on this side and one on this side, and they will snap into the framework. Just going to turn this around here. One on the opposite side there and then one right there. You see they have the rectangular holes there. And once you pop those out of place, you can then remove it. Now if you do find that the sliding cover does kind of come pop out, if you are twisting it back and forth, no problem. Just slide it all the way to the open position and you can snap it back into the rails there. Now moving along here with the cartridge in order to remove this, as you can see, I do have the stuck cartridge in the inside here. Now basically the easiest way to remove this is what you want to do is just stick your finger down on the inside there. Let me see if I can turn a little light in there so you can see it. You can see there's a little black tab sticking right there. What you want to do is just simply push on that and you have your cartridge out. Now next moving on, what we want to go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and grease all these moving mechanism parts here because what can happen over time is these do get stuck. The grease does dry up and you will get some dust prominent in the system and then therefore the system doesn't work as efficiently as it should. Now next taking some rubbing alcohol here. Now use rubbing alcohol because it's safe. It doesn't leave any residue any on the surfaces. It also evaporates fast and I don't have to worry about any contamination. I'm going to dump a little bit in the cup here. I have a Q-tip. What we'll do is just dip the Q-tip in there. Just uh, ensure just to wring it out a little bit so that it's not going to be dripping on areas we don't want it to. And we'll just go around and any of these slide mechanisms you do see inside the CD changer, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and clean those up. What this ensures is that when we do apply new grease to the areas, we don't have to worry about any access contamination. Now the Q-tips, when you do find that they are getting a little dirty, you can go around. If it's fine, it's a little too wet, you can go clean it up and you can also use the clean side and again, clean the areas. Now... You can go ahead and remove this case if you wish. I'm just working with what the areas I can see exposed. Now, obviously, there will be some in the inside here, on the underside of the uh, this faceplate here. And if you can gain access to the backside, great. Do so and clean those areas up as well. Again, but be careful. You don't want to get any of this on the electronics. Now, I've already went around and cleaned up all the excess grease or the old grease on the CD changer. What you can do is you can actually control this unit that moves up and down by just turning this small plastic gear on the bottom side here. Now, when doing this, use either your finger or a plastic object, something with give, because you don't want to use a metal object. Next thing, you'll wreck the teeth on here, and obviously the movement won't work properly. Now, just to show you how this works here, now if I do go the opposite way, you can see on the op front side as well there, sometimes you do need to help us go back and forth, but this will go up and down. And 
this does control the movement of all this. Now, when you do move it all the way in the down position here, it does expose these slide pins as well, as long as with the mechanisms on the back side and the front side here. Once you've done that, you can then go ahead and remove this unit if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it in. There's really no need to remove it again. And we'll be going ahead and applying some grease. Now, the grease I am applying here is what the existing grease was, will be lithium grease. Now, in order to apply this, what I'll be using is just a small Q-tip. Now before we do go ahead and do this, you want to ensure this is all dry, all the alcohol has dried up on there, there's no areas which you've missed. And taking a can of air, which I mentioned earlier when cleaning the inside of it, just go ahead and blow this out just to ensure there is no debris in there which could get caught up. Maybe a little bit of fibers left over from the Q-tip, it does depend. Now I find the Q-tips do work great for this, but again you always want to be careful and double check and make sure because this is sharp steel on the inside and you never know, just a small fiber could catch on something and then get lodged in somewhere and then cause movement issues. So once you've done that, you then go ahead and apply the lithium grease. Now the lithium grease I am using here, I haven't brought it out just yet, but what I'll be doing here is I'll be spraying it into a cup, which does make it workable because if you do use the spray stuff, if you are familiar with it, it does have a tendency to go everywhere. And we don't want this on the electronics, we want to be able to control the areas it is applied to. Now just to show you here, now I've already went ahead and applied it to all the areas can see I didn't go too crazy with applying a large amount of it but I did apply enough where it is going to lubricate the area sufficiently and there won't be any binding up. Now again if you are willing to move this gear back and forth here to move the whole assembly up and down does make it a lot easier and you can do this before you even having the CD changer hooked back up because this ensures that you get all the areas. Again as you can see here we do have the teeth exposed here but we don't have the ones exposed on the back side here and I've already moved it back and forth in order to expose those. Now I have a win ahead greased all those areas. Now I greased these two slide pins that move the whole assembly up and down and grease this little arm here and as well as the front side. All the areas that did have grease previously I went ahead and re-greased them when I did clean them off. Now obviously I can't stress this enough you don't want to apply too much where it is going to be a hazard to the rest of electronics. Now as for reassembly you can go ahead and reassemble this. Now again they may vary between makes and models but similar procedure with all cleaning up the internals on these. Now in some of these if you can gain access to the laser in the inside there. Now the laser you can use those discs in order to clean them if you can't gain access. If you can go ahead and use the Q-tip and you want to put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, use a clean one, not the one you've been using to remove the grease. And you just want to simply wipe the lens of it. Don't use anything else. You want something that does evaporate fast and doesn't leave any residue on there because it can damage the laser. Now as for the disc I mentioned a second ago, now those are the ones with just a little brushes on them. You can purchase them usually at your local electronics store or computer store. They are fairly common. Now obviously there is a procedure. This does have to be hooked up and it just simply plays like an ordinary disc would. Once you have this all reassembled, you can then go ahead and put it back in your vehicle and test it out and sure everything does work correctly. So this concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.